Hello, everybody. My name is Andrei Yurkovich, and I'm with Altorus. Uh, thank you for choosing my boring topic. Uh, we'll, we'll not speak about any fancy stuff like Lattice, like Diego, about microservices. We'll speak about numbers. But numbers are positive. We'll measure benefits today. Uh, unfortunately, Mike Jacobi, who was advertised as a co-speaker, uh, was unable to join me today on the stage. Uh, but I promise you my best effort to deliver this presentation and uh, deliver the content that, uh, that you uh, that you chosen to, uh, uh, to hear. Um, so let's start with, with traditional survey. Uh, show me a hand who didn't hear this phrase before. <laughs> okay, nobody. My next question, uh, who agrees with this principle? Who does agree? Who does? Okay. Just half of that in this. Okay, interesting. And uh, uh, show me the hand uh, who regularly uses this principle in your professional life. Okay, nice. Unfortunately, fewer people. Um, and then I understand, and understand why. Uh, using metrics is challenging. We, uh, you know, it's not something that, that we urge to do, urge to do, that we have to do. It's something that is important, but not, ever, uh, not mandatory, urgent. So we prefer to procrastinate. And uh, I hope that uh, my, my presentation today will uh, will help you using that, using the, using the metrics in your um, Cloud Farm implementation. And my, my last question to you, uh, who, who of you is uh, studying Cloud Foundry implementation uh, or thinking about implementation in the near future? Okay, nice. Yeah, so it's, it's for you and uh, uh, why, why do we need metrics? Uh, universal answer is that uh, we need metrics to take decisions. And uh, in uh, Cloud Foundry case, um, uh, I assume that uh, you are champions of Cloud Foundry. And uh, since you are here, you already sold or already sold on the, the idea of Cloud Foundry. Um, and uh, you took your decision. You are already interested in that. Uh, however, you're not sure about, may, maybe not sure about, um, uh, about implementing Cloud Foundry in your organization. And uh, you need to, to understand why exactly you need, you need Cloud Foundry, uh, what, goals, what goals you have. Uh, you also need to, to understand your alternatives. Um, you know, and uh, metrics uh, will help you as a champion uh, to convince people around you. Uh, who work with you, who work, uh, who, who, uh, whom you report. Uh, maybe you manage people and uh, you also need to convince them that it's, uh, it's the right thing to do. Maybe not. Uh, maybe it, it will appear that it's, it's not, uh, not the right thing to do and you need to do something else. But again, you will have an answer. So we need to go in some, some other direction. Um, also, uh, metrics will help us uh, track our progress where we go, how fast we go, and get, get feedback uh, whether we're approaching our destination point or we are move, moving maybe in, in some, some wrong direction. And um, uh, I represent uh, Altoros Professional Services Company and uh, why we came up with, uh, with this metrics, we you know, work with companies on different stages of, uh, of Cloud Foundry adoption. Uh, we work on trainings, uh, we help implement Cloud Foundry and we help adopt Cloud Foundry. Cloud Foundry. And uh, uh, this is exactly what I, what I was uh, telling, uh, telling to you about uh, um, the champion's challenge and uh, the champion's dilemma is uh, that uh, quite often people who are convinced about technology, who are passionate about it, uh, they are struggling to promote, um, uh, promote it to, to, to their colleagues and uh, uh, I suggested this topic for, for the summit and, and, and it was accepted. Um, so it's based on, uh, on, on my, uh, my real experience of, of dealing with, uh, with different customers. And it's our location, it's our customers, so normal marketing. 
uh, this is my version of uh, why we need Cloud Foundry. Uh, you probably have your own version. Uh, maybe uh, some you saw some presentations, and most likely uh, other speakers uh, were suggesting uh, other reasons why Cloud Foundry should be used. But my version is that uh, the, the major, major advantage is a decrease in time to production. Uh, you have uh, faster your application uh, on the market. Uh, also, you can uh, iterate faster, and it's clear. Um, you can increase productivity of developers. Uh, a lot of features that are already embedded into the platform uh, have not to be, in, uh, to be developed and, um, because they're already in the platform. Uh, it's also obvious. Uh, Cloud Foundry also helps to, uh, to improve quality of the, product, uh, of, of the products that, uh, that you develop, uh, primarily in terms of uh, latency, low latency, high availability. Uh, and, um, and high security. Um, efficiency of IT operations also clear. Uh, high level automation, uh, utilization of hardware uh, also could be, could be quite essential for, uh, for some companies. Um, in, my, in my practice, I also faced uh, other reasons why, uh, why companies uh, have chosen Cloud Foundry for, uh, for the IT departments, for the enterprises, like for instance, unity of um, environments across multiple locations. Now, for some companies, especially in a regulated industry, it's very important uh, because they don't have to certify uh, each new, each new location. Um, uh, in your case, it may be, um, uh, may be uh, somewhat different. Um, and um, now the question that, uh, that you need to, to ask yourself is uh, why exactly do I need Cloud Foundry? What exactly are my goals? It could be all of them. It could be two of uh, these three items, uh, two, 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 two or three of, of these items. Uh, it could be something different, but you need to answer the to answer question. Why do I need that? And um, another important question to ask yourself is uh, what are my alternatives? What, can I, what are the other, other ways that I can, can choose uh, what are the other paths that, that I can go? Uh, maybe I will be happy with uh, infrastructure as a service. Maybe it's, it's the way to go, or maybe I can I have capacity and desire to build some custom platform. Um, and maybe, maybe I just don't need to, to choose anything. And, uh, uh, and my situation is not that bad, and, uh, and probably going into some radical, um, some some radical uh, change and radical shift in my organization is, uh, is not the way to go. So uh, we need to understand what, what the alternatives are. And the next step is, uh, is to identify how, how much money, how much it will cost to us uh, in terms of time, in terms of money, in terms of effort, um, and um, um, also, infrastructure is clear. We need infrastructure to run applications. Also, uh, Cloud Foundry uh, doesn't come for free. Doesn't come for free, and um, uh, and uh, it uh, it has several components that uh, uh, that are basically an overhead in the system, like router, like blob store, like um, um, uh, cloud controller. Um, that's, uh, the, the, that's uh, all the components that we need to, uh, to keep in mind and uh, understand that uh, Cloud Foundry will be my applications plus something else. There is an overhead. Um, uh, we need uh, software uh, acquired or taken from, uh, from a third party. Um, we need to develop several tools on our platform, uh, like uh, on automated scalability, maybe security framework, maybe authentication framework. Uh, but if we have a platform, it, it makes sense for us to, uh, to integrate several, uh, several components that we will have to create in all our applications or in most our applications into, onto the platform level. Um, integration work clear. Um, infrastructure and the software support also, also clear. Uh, our people need to be trained. And um, probably the most important in investment 
uh, investment item is the cultural change. As uh, Angel Diaz uh, told on the key keynote yesterday, that uh, platform without culture is toxic. So very good, very good phrase, which I like a lot. And uh, uh, you will have to, uh, to spend time, money to, uh, to train your people, to evangelize your platform, uh, to, uh, to, to make sure that your people uh, really, uh, really create cloud native applications uh, that uh, you invest into, uh, into the culture of creating microservices, uh, agile culture. So and, uh, you, don't, uh, you don't deploy Cloud Foundry just, just because you're fine. And um, uh, um, only we are human and uh, we understand that uh, humans don't like change and uh, we, we have to do this change. And we need to spend, to spend, and to spend our time, money, effort in it. So the next, uh, the next uh, stage is uh, we we know how much it will cost, uh, how to uh, how to implement it. Now we know how much it will cost to uh, to support us, and our vendors uh, will will help to understand how much it will take uh, to uh, to purchase software, to uh, to buy professional services, to allocate our internal people, uh, to. Um, uh, to implement the platform and support it. Uh, and uh, um, uh, the right pain of the scale is, uh, is filled with, with some, amount, some amount of money. And uh, now we will balance, uh, balance the scales and fill in, fill in the next and uh, the other pain. Um, previously, when I listed uh, uh, listed the benefits of Cloud Foundry. Uh, the first one was uh, decreased time to production, and uh, we will try to calculate how much time to production uh, is worth off. So it's now now time to do the math. Now, formally simple, our effect will be time savings multiplied on the cost of delay and uh, uh, the number of applications that we have. Uh, cost of delay would be, uh, would be an uh, amount of money that we earn or save uh, if we had the application uh, running already in production. And um, let's say in our case, it will be 2,000 bucks a day. It may be, may be a lot, maybe may not too much, uh, depending on the size of the organization, uh, but uh, I think it's, it's about to be true. Like for an organization of recent size, uh, uh, cost of and benefit of, of having application, uh, uh, application up and running could be something like 2,000, 2000, uh, 2000 a day. Um, let's say we have 20 applications. In our department, we are going to, to develop 20 applications within the next, uh, the next year, a year and a half. So we need to calculate time savings. How are we going to do this? Uh, let's say we have a value stream map uh, to assess, and, uh, to assess this timeline, and um, uh, one of the major component of starting a project or this provisioning, provisioning of the infrastructure. And um, uh, this, uh, this map is relatively simple. It has just uh, four stages. In most cases, it, uh, for most enterprises, uh, there will be much more than these four stages. Um, uh, there could be 15 or even 20 or 30. The bigger the organization, uh, the longer is the chain. And, um, uh, the most important, uh, the most important um, um, time that, that, that is being spent on this provision of, of, of the infrastructure is not the time that we do the work, actually. It's a lead time. How much, how much uh, time is spent when task is being handed over between one specialist to another specialist? Uh, so in our cases, uh, uh, let's say hardware is provisioned within three hours, uh, but uh, it's, it's, it's being queued for three days. Um, 
Um, IP address allocation took, uh, took two hours, but again, uh, after it's provisioned, it could be handed over to another, um, another specialist, and uh, this task will, will be waiting for, uh, for two days to implement it. Um, so on and so forth, and um, in my example, uh, let's say it takes 10 days, uh, 10 days to provision the infrastructure. Now, what do you think? Is it optimistic or pessimistic? Yeah, now I think, I think at the time uh, I'm a bit uh, optimistic, but let's, uh, let's use this, uh, this number for our calculations. Um, besides provisioning, there are other aspects of, um, uh, of um, time to production savings. Um, um, besides provisioning the infrastructure, we will save time on uh, developers. Um, on developers uh, <coughs> um, setting up the environment. Uh, also, let's assume, let's assume we'll have four releases per day. And uh, in our case, uh, it could take three days uh, on, in, the, in the old fashioned way of, uh, of doing the release. In Cloud Foundry, it will be much less. Um, uh, also, very interesting, uh, interesting aspect is uh, developers' productivity. Uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, platform already has uh, several fun functions embedded, so developers don't have to spend time on developing uh, developing these functions, these features. And um, uh, let's say in, in my case, uh, in my case, we have uh, 29 days of savings um, before our application uh, is being first released to production. What does it mean? It's over a million for 20 application. I don't know, maybe, maybe it's not too much, maybe too much, depending on the scale of organization. Um, and uh, I assume that the bigger organization is, uh, the longer it will take to provision infrastructure. Uh, the higher will be cost of delay for, for applications uh, not, being, not being running. Uh, and um, the number of application could be, uh, could be bigger. So using this approach, we can calculate uh, what is the, the value of uh, time to production and uh, how, we, how we can justify uh, usage of Cloud Foundry just in, just in one aspect. Now, let's take another, uh, another example. We have a small organization and uh, the number of applications is, uh, is lower. Now the cost of delay is also lower and um, uh, the organization is not so uh, bureaucratic and um, uh, it takes less time to provision infrastructure and uh, the savings are not 30 days but just 10 days. Um, in this case, it's, it's not so much. So um, in this case, uh, it's not that valuable and we probably uh, better consider other options uh, or don't, don't do the change, change, change at all if uh, time to market is, uh, is the, only, uh, the only benefit that, that we're targeting. And uh, I won't stop on all the, all the benefits and uh, we won't do all the math um, and uh, make the total business case. Uh, but I would just uh, like to share some, some ideas, some approaches, what could be measured to uh, <coughs> how, how benefits can be measured and how they could be converted into, uh, into money, into actual savings. Um, uh, besides, uh, we, we already used developers' productivity uh, in our previous, previous example, and uh, developers' uh, productivity helps us save, save time to market and have our, develop, have our application delivered to, uh, to production faster. Uh, however, uh, there is another, uh, the, an, another facet of it uh, that developers don't spend that time, they don't get salary and, uh, on, on these features, so this another. Uh, another savings for, 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 for our organization. Um, for high availability, we can use uh, uh, percentage of availability, number of incidents, 
and uh, we can convert it into, into dollar value uh, with the cost of downtime and uh, the cost of customer acquisition, assuming that uh, some of our customers will, uh, will just leave if the service is, is unstable. Um, for uh, service quality, and uh, also we can connect to, uh, to customers, customer's lifetime and uh, revenue per, uh, per customer, how much customer gives uh, gives the organization uh, during its lifespan, uh, his, his or her lifespan. Um, with operational efficiency, uh, we can uh, we can link to uh, amount of time that is being spent on uh, on supporting the maintenance of uh, of our system and production of our platform. Uh, also, conversion to uh, to dollars is salary, also clear. Uh, hard utilization is uh, is percentage of RAM being used and the cost of RAM. And um, uh, if you use, let's say, such uh, such a metric as avoidance of uh, infrastructure as a service like lock in, now uh, we can uh, we can use time and uh, salary professional services. Um, that we uh, that we don't have uh, that we that we may spend to migrate to to another uh, to another platform. How much we are anchored to this specific specific infrastructure, and how much it will cost for us to go somewhere else. <coughs> um, besides that, my dear champions, you may use uh, additional additional benefits uh, that uh, that could be. Uh, monetized and uh, quantified could be could not be monetized or quantified, um, but you may expect that uh, with a properly functioning uh, uh, functioning platform, you will have more satisfied developer or customers. Um, also, quite important could be lower management overhead and uh, also lower barrier to uh, to initiate uh, initiate new projects. <coughs> Sorry. Um, again, if an, uh, if you don't uh, if you didn't justify uh, justify the values and uh, your expenses into the platform before uh, with uh, with the metrics that we used on our previous slide, uh, then you can dig in into these metrics or uh, utilize uh, your own your own goals and your own your own benefits. And let's see. Let's say we. Uh, we calculated 10 million potential of cloud call fund reusage, call fund utilization. And um, if nobody uses it, we can calculate the effort and effect. And um, um, I'm suggesting to, uh, to use uh, another dimension of, uh, of metrics, uh, which are adoption metrics, uh, to see how how much actually uh, your organization is utilizing utilizing the platform in terms of uh, applications that are being hosted? Uh, and so the, these are some, some examples, some examples of um, uh, metrics that uh, you can use to track um, track the adoption and um, um, uh, with uh, with increase of adoption. Uh, you will you will increase the value of our platform for uh, for your company your organization, and um, yeah we we work in software uh, development industry and uh, there are agile methodologies that uh, tell us how to develop our our software, and um, we may apply uh, this uh, scientific method or lean approach into our organization and uh, to iterate, uh, move to our goal, see. Uh, how we how we achieve our metrics and how how we achieve our goals and uh, um, as as a summary we are close to to the end of my presentation uh, in order to uh, to convince and to uh, to be successful in cloud foundry implementation uh, I suggest that uh, the champions of cloud foundry uh, should understand the goals. Um, Identify metrics, uh, be clear about uh, what they want to achieve and what's achievable. Um, assess possible result and if the results are satisfactory, uh, if it's worth of pursuing. 
of these goals than just to act. You take your decision and you act on them. Um, now, also having metrics uh, helps, uh, helps us to, uh, to track the progress, uh, to get a proof of success. And uh, we need to understand that it just doesn't come for free and uh, we need to, uh, to iterate, to change culture, uh, to convince people around us and to be the leaders. Thank you. Questions? <laughs> Okay, do we have questions? Yeah. So, uh, to understand what you were saying, assessing the cohort, you had quite a large number of uh, variables, some of which could have been interdependent. How do you go about um, preventing those cross problems from introducing confirmation bias? I mean, it's possible to work through those numbers in such a complex cross problem to get the answer you want to support the conclusion you're looking for. Yeah, very good question. Um, actually, in, uh, I would suggest to, to use the, the, the metrics that are objective uh, to, uh, to utilize the actual processes that organization is, is utilizing and uh, try to, um, to identify the hidden processes, uh, what, we didn't, what we didn't calculate, what we do, and uh, to be as objective as possible. The number of applications. Uh, no, I, I get the number of applications. Okay. Uh -huh. Or the, the, two, the previous two numbers seem to be related in different ways, not just a direct cross, direct multiplication. Uh, we have. Um, in, in my equation, you have uh, three, uh, three elements um, it's uh, cost of delay, it's, it's money metric. Now uh, then, uh, cost of delay per day, and so we have, we have to multi multiply it uh, by number of days, and uh, also number of locations. Did I address a question? Okay. Other questions? Yeah. Thanks again. <laughs>